Hi there, my name's Vince from Mr. Telephone and today I'm gonna to show you how to make an ADSL lead using CAT6 cable. Now, at the moment, your ADSL lead is probably just a flat cable like this. It was probably supplied with your router when you got it from your service provider. Now, if you wanna make your own CAT6 cable, I'm gonna show you how. Uh, I do sell these cables from my, uh, from my eBay shop, but this video is gonna show you how to uh, make them if, if you wanna make them yourselves. Now, this cable is the ADSL cable, so at the moment your house might have these ADSL filters and it goes from the ADSL filter into your router, your home hub, whatever, whatever you use. Okay. Now uh, you might have the microfilter plugged into your master socket, you might have the microfilter plugged into an extension socket, you might have an ADSL faceplate plugged onto your master socket or you might have the new VDSL faceplates plugged into your master socket. This ADSL cable will work with all of these scenarios, whether you've got an ADSL faceplate or a VDSL faceplate, or whether you've got the microfilters, they will all work, okay? So that's it into, uh, into there. Your ADSL faceplate is into here. Now, so you wanna change your lead because these leads are not very good. I've already done a video explaining about these flat leads. Obviously they do work, otherwise they wouldn't be supplied, but uh, they can pick up a lot of interference because they're flat. So I've already done a video of how to make a Cat5e ADSL lead, but this one is gonna be a Cat6 ADSL lead. It's slightly different. The wiring configuration is the same. It's just, it's very hard to get the Cat6 cable in to the RJ the RJ11 plugs because uh, the Cat6 cable is so fat in comparison to the plugs. Now I'm just gonna show you the plugs you need because they are different than the uh, Cat5e plugs. Basically, you need RJ12 plugs. Although the ADSL signal is only running down the middle two wires and uh, normally you would use a RJ11 plug, which is just the four core plug, the four pin plug. So this is a 6P4C. Just going to show it to you there, you zoomed in, yeah, so that's that one there. This will work fine with flat cable and Cat5e cable, but because the entrance hole here is so small, you can't physically get the Cat6 cable into it, there's just not enough room. So what you're going to have to use is you're going to have to use these RJ12 plugs. They're actually exactly the same size as the RJ11, the difference is they've got they're a 6P6C plug, also known as an RJ12. Again, I've done videos on different types of plugs. But the reason you have to use this is not because it's got more pins, because you won't be using those pins. You're still just going to be using the four pins. Or an ADSL, you can just use two pins. But the reason is because if you have a look at the back, can you see that this plug here is a lot bigger, the entry is a lot bigger than the RJ11 plug. So you will only be able to get the Cat6 cable into the RJ12 plug. So that's this plug here, this one here. You can see that that's bigger, yeah? So you're gonna to have to order up some RJ12 or they're also known as 6P6C because they're six position and they've got six contacts. This one here has only got the four contacts. So that's a 6P4C, that's a 6P6C this one here, so you're gonna need some of these, okay? Again, I do sell these in my uh, in my eBay shop. The ones I've got at the moment are co currently made by Cobb. They're, uh, they're nice. Now, it's still a very tight squeeze, even using these ones, it's still a very tight squeeze, but I'm gonna show you what you can do to get them to fit. So first of all, strip the cable back. It's up to you how you do this. I'm gonna use a, a cable stripper, okay? Now, the main thing that you wanna do is you don't wanna damage the inside wires. So, because I've only just barely scored this, you can see that when I clip it there, when I bend it, you can hear it snapping. I know that I haven't damaged any of the wires on the inside because I only just scored around the edge. Now, some cables have a drawstring in them, so you can actually get the string and you can pull it back, and then you also know you haven't damaged the edge. The only problem is when you're dealing with these plugs, because it's so, so, so small, there's such a tiny amount of room there, you want this line, this sheath here, this white line, this white uh, cover, you want it to be as straight as possible. Because if you cut it using cutters and it's all diagonal and jagged, what you'll find is when you push it into the plug, you'll find that maybe the left-hand side might go in, but the right-hand side be hanging out. And then as soon as you bend the plug a little bit, it's just gonna fall straight off. So uh, if you can, get a dead straight line. I've just used strippers here. 
If you've got some crimpers, you can use that part of the this part of the crimpers here to spin it round, and that will also score. That will also score it. But try to get as straight a line as possible. Okay, so now we're just going to be using the blues and the oranges. Like I've said before, the ADSL signal does just go down the one pair of wires. So as long as you use, you can actually use any pair of wires, uh, as long as it's on the middle two pins of the RJ12 plug. I'm going to use two, I'm going to connect up two pairs because the cable's just slightly stronger like that and then you can use it for other things other than ADSL because uh, if you're making this for yourself you can just use this but I sell these so I, I use all the four wires because sometimes people want the Cat6 lead for other leads rather than just for ADSL. So to begin with what you need to do is just get rid of the green and the brown so we're going to be using the blues and the oranges. And now, because it's Cat6, you've got this plastic cross running right the way through it. And this is what causes the problem when you're trying to squeeze it into the RJ12 plug. Because it's so bulky, it takes up so much room, there's no room to get it into the plug. So what you have to do is cut it off. Now what I do is I try to get as much of it off as possible. So I go down, I don't know if you can see that. I kind of go in at an angle like that so I can get as much away as possible. Obviously without cutting the blue or the orange wires. Yeah, so already I've got rid of most of that now, but it's still not really going to fit. If you were just to push that in now, you're still going to have trouble getting it in there. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stretch the sheath away from that plastic cross member on the inside. So to begin with, unravel the wires and get them in the correct order, but they might fall out of order when you start pulling at the sheath. But just to begin with, just unravel them. Now I'm just going to show you the order we're going to use. We're going to be using the blue pair in the middle. That's the important pair for ADSL. That's the one that we're going to be using. So it's white orange here, blue white here, white blue here, and orange white here, the orange, the end of the orange pair here. So we've got them in roughly the right order, but now what we have to do is we have to stretch. So you might want to just zoom out for this bit. We're going to have to stretch the cable to get it away from the plastic cross member because I still won't be able to get that plug on as it is right now. So what we're going to do is stretch it. So you need to grab it. Obviously, if you're making a very short lead, it's going to be hard to have enough to be able to, to be able to stretch it. So stretch it. And you can see now that I've only got a little bit of wire sticking out because the plastic cross member is now all the way down here. And that leaves me now, it's nice and soft here, just similar now to Cat5 e cable, still a little bit bigger because the sheath itself has a bigger diameter. This cable is roughly uh, uh, six, six and a half mil, so between six and seven mil, uh, probably slightly closer to six mil than seven mil, so just over six mil. If your Cat6 cable is bigger than that, you're not going to be able to do it. So if you're using like Cat6A cable or maybe external Cat6 cable, there's no way you're going to get it into an RJ12 plug. But most, most of the cables, this cable here is made by XL. This is XL cable. Uh, this is the, the white one. This is a low smoke cable. I've also got grey Cat6 cable that works absolutely fine. That's XL. And I've also used a couple of other brands and they work fine as well. So most Cat6 cables you get will be just over 6 mil in diameter. So, uh, yeah, sorry, I waffled on there. Basically, you've got the, uh, the plastic cross members all the way back here now. So now you've got enough room for this to crush down so you can get it into the plug. If you don't pull it away from the cross member, it won't squeeze into the plug. So what we'll do now is make sure we're in the correct order, which is white orange, blue, white blue, and orange. Yeah? So the blue pair is in the middle, and that's the one that the signal travels down. Now, we're going to have to use some nice cutters here to get a straight line. You can use normal side cutters, but you don't always get a dead straight line. So I like to use the blade on these uh, RJ45 crimpers. You snip it there. And now I've got a nice straight line. Okay. So now what I have to do is I have to try to squeeze it into this plug. Now you've got to be careful because remember this has got six holes in it. We only need to fill the middle four. On the Cat5e one, they've only really got four holes. So as long as you push them in, it's going to go into the four holes. But make sure you don't go holes one to five or two to six. You want to go holes two, three, four, and five. Yeah? Is that right? No, one to four, sorry. Make sure you don't go one to four or two to six. You need to go two, three, four, and five. 
So what we'll do now is squeeze this in here, making sure you get it into the middle holes, and at the same time, you're gonna to have to kind of crush down the, the sheath. And you might not get it on the first attempt. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna work it along so that the white sheath fills up the whole of the inside. If the white sheath's just barely in, when you crimp it, there's a chance it's just gonna fall off again. But if you can, if you can see, the end, of the, the end of the entry for the sheath is here, and you can see the white sheath has fully gone all the way in. And if you go to the other side, again, you can see the white sheath has fully gone, can you see that? Fully gone right the way into the plug, okay? And if you check the top, top and the bottom, you can see again, it's right the way there. This is what I meant by you have to cut it straight, because if it wasn't straight, it would be going down at an angle now, and this side would be just barely in. And when you crush it down, the little bit here crushes onto the cable, and that's what holds the plug in. And if that doesn't crush fully onto the cable, then uh, the, the plug-in time will just fall off. So you need to make sure it's fully on. And again, push the wires to the very, very end. I don't know if you can see the copper wires, the very end of that plug. So the wires have gone to the very end and give a visual inspection on the top to make sure that the colours are correct. So on this one here I've done white orange, blue, white blue and orange and also they're in the, the, the correct holes. So I've got the, the hole number one and the hole number six empty so in the, they're in the middle, the middle four holes. So I know now that that's, uh, that's good and then you need to get yourself some RJ11 or RJ12 crimpers. Most, uh, well, they will have to be RJ12 uh, crimpers, so that will be the, uh, the 4P, uh, 6P, 6C. Most RJ11 crimpers do crimp the 6, uh, do have 6 contacts, but just double check that one. So you plug it into the uh, RJ12 crimpers and press down. There we go. And now that plug is on nice and strong, okay? Yeah? It's not going to go anywhere. Obviously, when you're doing this, leave yourself enough slack. If you push that into your router and it's at a real angle like that, over time it probably will work its way loose because it's very stiff cable. So make sure that, uh, that you've left enough slack so you can come out of your router and your microfilter nicely and then back into your router or microfilter, whichever way around you're doing it. So if it was too tight, it's going to cause problems. So leave yourself a, you know, a nice bit of slack to allow it to go around corners. Don't put it tight at a right angle. Let, a, let, it, uh, let it sit nicely. So that side's in there. So now we do the same on the other side. Obviously I'll just speed this bit up because I've just explained how to do it. The blue and oranges. Cut away the, the brown and the greens. Get rid of the plastic cross member. Okay, undo the cables, the wires. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do this. Again, as long as the blues are in the middle, it doesn't matter. So you can wire it straight, like I did on the other side, which was white orange, blue, white blue, orange, or most ADSL cables are actually wired up crossed. I don't know why they're wired up crossed. This was just from years ago. But, uh, so I wire mine up crossed. So what I mean by crossed is, on this side, it's like, uh, it's like a mirror image. So if this side, if I did white, orange here, I'm then gonna do orange on this side. And then if I did blue, it's gonna be white, blue. So it's the same, it's just like flipping it over. But as I, it doesn't matter, for ADSL you can wire it straight, but if you need it for another purpose, then it's up to you. You need to check the lead that you're using at the moment. And if it's wired straight, wire it straight. If it's wired crossed, wire it crossed. But I wire my, ADSL and my VDS, uh, why my ADSL leads crossed. So uh, it's going to be the mirror image of the other side. So again, stretch the cable. Now, what you find is the order does muck up again when you stretch it. So you just need to sort that out. Turn it around so it's crossed. There we go. Now again, I've got a nice, nice straight line. And that's roughly the distance you need. But what I would say is, 
Always go too much to begin with because you can always take the plug off and then cut it again. If you cut it too short, you're gonna to have to start again because you won't be able to get any more wires out unless you were to hold them and try to pull back the sheath a bit. But always do them too, too long to begin with. But that's about right because if you look where the, if you look where the cable thing goes here, can you see there that that's pretty much at the end of the plug? So I know by the time I push my wires in and then push my cable sheath all the way in, I know my wires will be at the end of the plug and the cable sheet will be at the end of the, the plug as well. And again, you put it in the middle four holes. Ease that in there. Before I crimp it down again, you can see that uh, the copper is right away to the very end. You can see that the sheath has gone to the, let's keep it still, the, sheath, the sheath's gone right the way through to the end of the plug. That's the same on both ends. And when I have them both with the pins up, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna see this or not, but you can see that they're a, a, a kind of mirror image of each other. So this is orange white on this side, yet this one here is orange. So they're like, a, this is called a crossed cable. So the one that goes to pin two on this side will go to pin five on this side. Three, four. Four, three, and uh, five, and two. So they're, they're crossed from each other, yeah? Let me crimp that down. wrong side, crimp the one I've just crimped, hold on. Again, when you're doing it into the crimpers, push the sheath fully in in case you pull the crimpers away from the, if you pull the crimpers away, then the plug's gonna come away from the sheath. So pull the sheath into the crimpers when you're crimping. That's it. And now that's both, both plugs fully in on the Cat6 cable. So really, it's the same as doing the Cat5e. The only difference is you have to cut the cross member and stretch the cable away. Yeah, and now the last thing, test it. If you've got one of these cheap little testers, you get them on eBay for a few quid. Put it into the uh, the RJ11 stroke RJ12 ports here and here up the top. Now it's going to be crossed. So hopefully, if I wired it correctly, what we should see is this will go down two, three, four, five, and this will come up at the same time five, four, three, two. So two will go to five, three will go to four. Four will go to three, and five will go to two. Can we see that? Five, four, three, two. Five, four, let me see if I can slow it down. Five, four, three, two, okay? So I know now that there's continuity between the pins there, so it's been wired up correctly. If when you do it, you see two, three, four, five. If it's for ADSL, fine, just carry on. It will work absolutely fine. I just wire these up cross because that's the way that ADSL leads are made. But as I say, it doesn't matter for broadband. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a video on how to make Cat6 ADSL leads. Again, if you want any of this stuff, if you want the cable, if you want the RJ12 plugs, because a lot of people call RJ12 and RJ11 plugs the same thing. So look on my shop and you will see that I have RJ12 plugs. I uh, can't remember the price of them, they're roughly about £3 for four, and uh, yeah, go to that website there, www.mrtelephone.co.uk. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you find it useful, please subscribe for more videos, give it a thumbs up if you like it, see you soon, thank you very much.